Honking, cat calls, whistles, and creepy gestures are an everyday reality for most women. It's called street harassment. But what is street harassment exactly? It's more than just an action, it's a feeling. Whenever you feel threatened by another person's comments or even demeanor, because everyone has different boundaries and limits, street harassment is hard to define, which makes it difficult for police to enforce. Alberta is a growing province with more jobs and wealth than anywhere else in Canada. And with this comes a larger population. And often in large cities, street harassment can become a problem because most people are strangers. And it's much easier to harass someone who you may never see again. I went to the streets to see what Calgarians thought about street harassment. It can be extremely startling and extremely offensive and think the feminine image is often fetishized and over-sexualized in our culture. Harassment's never okay. I personally don't like it. I don't enjoy it either, it sort of bothers me. I feel like during Stampede though, it's like socially acceptable. 100% of the time, you see it all the time. The regularity of the occurrences make it more justifiable in somebody's mind because maybe their friend does it or something, right? I myself, I have sisters, and if somebody talked to them that way, that would. I also have eight brothers, and it would not be okay for us. Well, yeah, I mean, street harassment is never okay, but sometimes there are situations where it comes. Well, I wouldn't say they bring it on themselves, but if you're wearing like a really short skirt and you just aren't really dressed classy. Just a lot of dirty, inappropriate things from older guys, I guess, would have to be what I've experienced. And it's creepy. It's like kind of really like, really? Like you're going to say that to me? Like I'm not that old? And like it makes me feel like I'm sending a bad message about myself when I like originally wasn't planning to do that. Mostly just, you know, when you're walking like either around the bar or like home from the bar, like sometimes people feel like it's okay to just yell at you or like even grab you sometimes, which is just not okay. Um, I actually really like street harassment personally. I just like driving around and, and, and heckling people and uh, honking at people. You know, I find it fun, but I mean, it's, for me, it's all fun. I don't, I'm not, I'm not there to hurt people's feelings, you know, just, just to maybe scare someone a little bit. Although most men assume it's harmless, it makes women feel unsafe in public places. Now a group of women have decided to fight back. Holla Back, a movement against street harassment, first began in New York City back in 2005. It originally began as a blog, but soon turned into much more than that. Holla Back NYC created a website and encouraged women to photograph or film their harassers with their cell phones. Stories began to be posted, and from there, debate sparked. Soon, the website was getting two to three requests a week, wondering if a holla back could be started in their city or country. Places like France, Mexico, London, Germany, Mumbai, Israel, and Canada were soon mini chapters of what all began in New York City, from a couple of women sick of being harassed every time they walked down the street. The latest edition, Holla Back Alberta. Director of Holla Back Alberta, Lauren Alston, explains how she first got involved. I would say, uh, I guess in a way, I, I do like to lead in, in the way that I, I feel I'm very passionate uh, for the subject. I feel that this is something that I don't want to stand for, and I don't believe that, you know, every time I walk down the street, the price I should pay would, should be street harassment. So I really don't think that that's something that I should deal with, and I don't think that's something that anybody on the street should deal with. And I've uh, talked to many people who have just awful stories about street harassment or issues um, that have actually scared them on the streets. And I thought, well, I just, I don't think we should put up with this. And I really want to make a stand. Alston emphasizes how quick and easy we can collect data on this kind of harassment with something as simple as our phones. With all of our technology, we have the camera phones, cell phones, um, you know, iPhones, they have GPS, all of the technology we have, we can use um, in an advantageous way to basically raise awareness of what is going on in the street. Hollaback is a platform to give victims of street harassment a voice. But Alston explains that the only way to actually change things is if enough people join the movement. Hollaback is a crowdsource initiative. It's a crowdsource way to end street harassment. 
So, you know, it's it's not just, you know, one or two people, you know, telling their story. It's a group of people telling their stories and a group of people not standing for it. And the more people won't stand for it, you know, the the, the more harassers or other people will realize, oh, this isn't something I can just get away with or isn't or it, you know it's something that bothers people i mean some some people may not be aware that their comments are are actually bothering people or actually you know not taken as a compliment and and so just creating that awareness from you know all angles from from you know letting harassers know that it's not okay letting people know what street harassment is and letting you know victims of street harassment know that they're they're not alone Hollaback believes that street harassment is such an important topic because it is often the gateway crime to other forms of harassment. When street harassment becomes okay, you know, groping becomes okay. And then if, if groping becomes okay, then, you know, touching and beating becomes okay. And then it just escalates from there. The whole premise of street harassment is that it's not something that just occurs on the streets. Harassment happens in any public space, really. I mean, women who work in restaurants are quite accustomed to harassment in the workplace, but are rarely willing to speak out about it. I spoke to one waitress, we'll call her Sam who works at an upper-class, large-chain restaurant downtown on 17th Ave. She's been working in the industry for three years and admits that she was naive at first, but quickly learned how often men harass waitresses while working. I one time was serving this man. Well, I hadn't served him yet, but he just scouted me out somehow in the lounge and like, kept walking over to me and like wanting to touch my hands. And he would not leave me alone. Like, and people, like customers, noticed that he was just like following me through the lounge. So we had to k- kick him out, and like the police had to come for that one. And other times, I had a man sitting at my bar asking me questions of like, how old was I when I became sexually active, and just really strange questions like that. And he was a lot older, like probably in his 40s. Sam explained that the best way to deal with harassment was simply to make a joke about it. And that if it really bugged you or didn't agree with your morals, you could simply find another job. I spoke with another waitress, we'll call her Jenna, who had an even scarier story. He like got a little bit obsessed and, um, and I think he got the wrong message from me. And he, anyways, he started like following me home and uh, several times I woke up in the middle of the night and he'd be standing on my balcony and yeah he was a he was a big problem and uh, and that was yeah that was a huge violation it was just that only happened a few times but I ended up moving um, out of my apartment into a, a house and like across town and I changed my phone number and I quit my job with serious stories like this, Lauren Alston, director of Hollaback, Alberta, explains that it's not a culture issue, but a worldwide issue, because harassment is... Outdated. Underrated. Infuriating. Overcome. Vulnerable. Violation. But with enough awareness, we can change anything. In Calgary, I'm Lauren Plant.